No. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jane, and I'll be leading today's worship. Uh, this first song is a song that I personally hold very close to my heart. I used to lead worship for children, usually ages four, five, or six, with my mom, who's next to me. Um, and this was one of my favorite songs, personally. It was just like a song that was really easy to remember, and it was easy to get attached to. Uh, and I hope that you guys will also be able to feel that like what I had when not only when my mom was teaching me when I was four to six uh, or when I was older and I was teaching those kids who are four to six. Uh, you can play the song. guys really like that song i personally really love it um but this next song, but this next song is like also a song that i would hear often at church we would play it uh, or like the people would play it for uh youth worship and so it's gonna be easier for maybe like maybe like teenagers adults young adults who well it's gonna be easier for them to listen to it's gonna be more fun um but it holds a lot of power and praise. And I hope that you guys can feel the kind of power that I felt listening to it. May the Lord bless us. Uh, Pastor Lenny, you can play it.
，亲爱的天父，谢谢你，谢谢你又把我们，呃，这些人带到一起，嗯、呃，谢谢你，谢谢你，嗯、呃，给我们这么好的歌曲，让我们可以，嗯、呃，把我们每个人，我们的心都放下来。呃，来到你的面前，以谦卑的心来到你的面前，主耶稣，就请你带领接下来这幕时分享信息的时间，请你活泼的灵运行在我们当中，请你来帮助我们在，在呃我们需要的时候，我们都来到你的面前寻求你的帮助，也请你来帮助我们每天能够爱你多一点。以上祷告，奉主耶稣的名，阿门。Amen. Okay, thank you, and welcome again to our Sunday afternoon family worship. Uh, your first time, or anybody, everybody, hope we can um all get to know each other more at the end of worship. Uh, if you like to join our Telegram group, uh, this is uh uh ID here. Oh, uh, we still continue have. Homeschool training, Chinese warrior class, English warrior class, and the devotions. Wow, every day I get to see you. Okay, I want you to pray next. Uh, to oh, actually it's tomorrow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share at the Logos Seminary. Zhen Dao Shenxuan is probably the most recognized seminary, Chinese seminary in. North America, so this is a, a very um, precious opportunity and very honorable for me to speak uh, for to many pastors, leaders about our next generation in our church. So, uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate your prayer for this uh, very important event. And next weekend, I'm going Friday. I'm going to fly to.、Uh, Los Angeles area have three days、uh, conference. Even need more your prayer. So next Sunday we four p.m. we won't have the service here.、Um, you can follow by the Zoom. All right.、Uh, yeah. So parents, you know, where to find me. We can all together by Zoom with those、uh, conference. Okay. Today I'm going to talk about Isaiah. Uh, when we meet, I'm going to kind of、uh, a serious study about、uh, each prophets, especially on how God called them. It's also my more my personal interest of、uh, study. I want to see how God called each prophets. So today we start the first one, Isaiah, the prophet who answers the call. Let's turn to Bible Isaiah chapter six, Isaiah chapter six. Uh, you need your pretty Bible, okay? I won't show the text on the screen. So, Jeffrey, can you read for us? You read chapter six, verse one to seven, okay? And then,、uh, can I have? I saw.、Uh, then I oh, I saw Jennifer there. So Jennifer, can you read verse eight to thirteen? Okay. So,、uh, all right. You know that、uh, King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the ser seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory." And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, "Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a." Man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of uncle unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of Hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar, 
And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Okay, Jennifer. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their heart ears heavy and bind their eyes. These they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn to be healed. Then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities fly waste without inhabitants, and houses without people, and the land is a desolate waste, and the Lord removes people far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land, and through a tenth remaining it, it will be burned again, like a caravans or an oak, whose stump remains when it is fell. The holy seed in his stump. Okay, thank you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you for you call us to work with you. May we listen the call and we'll respond to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. No greater man lives in vain. The history of the world is but the biography of great men. You agree with that? Actually, I'm glad that I don't know whether you like history or not. I like history a lot. But make the history make it interesting. It's not just by every event after one another events. It's because there's person involved. And I always very uh, curious and interested how person involved in each generation, how they face their challenge and how they live involved with. And God called us to do that too. So uh, this is from our daily walk. God is not so much seeking those with the ability to do everything, as he is lost with the willingness to do anything. Wow, isn't it interesting? We always say God is a God of history. Uh, history is his story, okay? But God decided to call people to work with him. But he called people doesn't necessarily for those who has an ability, but has willingness to do for God. Isaiah is one of that. So the Bible is a record of how man responds to God's calling. And I hope when we study this theory of prophets, it's not just all oh, that's those prophets. Not me. Actually, God's still doing the same thing. And he may not call us as a prophet, but everybody, God's going to call you to do his work. So who is Isaiah? Isaiah chapter 1. Uh, let's see. Eileen, can you read this verse? Okay. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Uh, wait, hold on. Dang it, no. One, one. On the screen. It's on the screen. Oh. The vision of Isaiah, and the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Oz. Isaiah, Jordan, Asas, and Hezekiah, the kings of Judah. Okay, so this is the introduction of Isaiah. Actually, we don't know much about Isaiah, but this here from here, so he's a son of Amos, and then uh, he served under four kings, and it's more on this Judah and Jerusalem. So here, you understand better where Isaiah fits. So he's serving under about 740 BC to 686 BC. So between this time, it's about the same time as Hosea and Micah. So this is a background 
of Isaiah. It, during the time when Northern Kingdom is under the attack of Assyrian. So it's not a peaceful time. And he served four kings. So um, let us see. Come back to chapter 6, verse 1 here. Oh, actually, other place talk about he has two sons. Okay. So he did get married, and he has two sons. And the, his wife is prophetess, prophetess, but we don't know her name. Okay. Chapter 6. In the year of the king Uzziah, Die, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. So here we get the background of this King Uzziah. So here Uzziah, Johan, Ahaz, Hezekiah. This is four king Isaiah served under. So you can see Uzziah is kind of good king, but then he died, the kingdom go down a little bit. And until the Hezekiah come back up. So this is a, not an easy time, right? A good king died. So it must be a, quite a turmoil. So here, give us a contrast. King died, but at the same time, Isaiah saw the throne of God. So if we fix our eye on the throne of man, it's a, it's a difficult time because a king just died. But at the same time, we can fix our eyes on the throne of God. And he's what Isaiah see. He sees the Lord sitting upon the throne high and lifted up. And the train of his will fill the temple. Wow, this must be a cry, amazing thing that Isaiah see that. Nobody can really see God. Remember, the temple is in the whole. We think that uh, uh, in the side inside the temple, there's holy or holies. Only the high priest can go in once a year. But here, Isaiah see God and sit on the high on the throne high and lift up. I don't know when you see that. What would you feel like? He must be just so excited, so encouraged. Because king die, new king come, king after kings. But God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion endures through all generations. So that's great comfort for us. Our God never need to be replaced by another king. He is everlasting king. And his kingdom lasts forever. That's something we need to fix our eye on God this time. Whenever it's a difficult time, whenever you see, especially you see our earthly world have so many problems, we need to fix our eye on God and the God who sit on the throne high and lift it up because he is the real king. But besides that, we also see something Interesting. About him stood the seraphim. Each has six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So starting from the temple now, he sees it to the whole world. The whole earth is full of his glory. Do you see that? Do you picture that? And that's six seraphim here is serving God. Interesting that they cover their feet, cover their uh, face. That could mean that uh, they just serve God. They don't have identity. They don't claim that, oh, I'm so good. It's, they're serving God. It's, wanted that people focus on God. So they cover their wings, cover their face. And maybe there's sometimes we need to have this same attitude as we serve God. Maybe nobody will know, okay? You put your heart so much, you serve God, but maybe nobody would know you. But God knows. That's all enough. 
And these seraphim, basically that's angels, they're praising God, holy, holy, holy. And the foundation of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. Wow. Do you want to be there? Whenever there's a small crowd, it means God's presence is there. So picture this vision a little bit. That's, can you picture that what Isaiah see these things? I don't know that uh, who can compare this, the most beautiful, most exciting scenery, but this is a great encounter of God. Okay, so if you were Isaiah, what would you do after this? What would be your response? So first, he encountered God. But what's the response after he encountered God? Remember, we just read this a couple of days ago. For the whole earth should be filled of the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Wow, that is the full earth going to fill with the glory of God. Same thing that God's knowledge is going to cover the whole earth. And J.I. Packer said, our high and previous calling is to do the will of God in the power of God for the glory of God. That's something we need to focus. It's for the glory of God, not just us. And God called us to do the will of God in the power of God for that purpose. Wow, I like this quote. See, gospel is not just how we just can save and then to see how much benefit benefit us. Oh, God help me to get a good score. God help me to find a good job. God help me to, to do this, do this. Isn't it oftentimes that's the testimony we heard, especially for, uh, for the baptism, right? But don't stop there. Gospel is not just how we can be saved, but how can we live for the glory of God? That is the purpose. So back to this. You see that? We need to shift this me center to God center. And I think God is changing, calling us to changing our view at such time as this. So when he sees that, that's his response. Isaiah said, and I say, woe is the me who for I'm lost. Wow, quite a surprise. That's his response. I don't know if, if you were Isaiah, you see this. Wow, great. You, you're going to clap the hand. Thank you, Lord. Whoa, what a spectacular performance. We, let me see you. And maybe that's very often... Every week we go to church, we hear or attend the great conferences. Oh, great, great. But I pray that when we truly encounter God, is that we see who we are. We see our true situation. Isaiah said, for I am lost. And for I'm a man of clean and clean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. Isaiah compared it to other people. He's a pretty good person already, okay? But yet, he has such a response. And remember, Paul had a similar thing. He said, the saying is trustworthy and deserve of full acceptance. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. I'm the worst. I think for us, it's truly, really, we will come close to God, we will really see our real situation, that we are the worst. Maybe that's something we need to see today. We don't see people outside or they lost. We see, we are we the, the lost also compared with, with the glory of God. Whole season. And I love this quote. I think the Lucy probably remember this, right? Yeah, she is. William Carey said on his on his grave, right? A wretch poor and helpless worm on the kind arms I fall. The world tells us we need to have self-esteem. Oh, you're so great. 
but when we truly encounter God, we see we are just a worm. We are the, the worst of sinners. And yet we still can serve God. And yet God still grace so much. It's all because of his grace and love. And so when we see this, actually, we can see we are who we are. And he see, for I am a man of unclean lips. Very ironically, he's a prophet. The prophet is, is by how he speak. But God want him to see, because he's going to use his lips to, to speak for God, to share God's message. So he need to be sanctified of the tool going to be used by God. So maybe, of, of course, we're a whole person, but maybe if you were, let's say, you are the one using hand, you are the one using other, we all need to be sanctified by God first, knowing our because we are sinners, the whole being of us. We don't, we cannot serve God. It's all God's grace. And he not only, he has unclean lips, he also live among, live in the midst of the people of unclean lips. God wants us to identify with the sinners. It's not because we are better. It's all because God's grace called us. And so we need to know other people also need salvation, also need gospel. So that's Isaiah, his response when he sees the glory of God. When we truly know that God can do something so one step of fruit to us, having his hand on a burn coin, uh, burning coal and that he had taken the tongs from the altar. And then he touched me, touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Remember Jesus said, only for those who know they are sick, they need doctor. If we, are, we don't feel we are sick, we don't need, right? So when Isaiah see he is a sinner, God works on him. God sent Seraphi to touch his lips and take away his sins. Praise the Lord. But God going to use, God going to sanctify. God going to equip the person. But first, we need to be, um, be changed. We first, we need to acknowledge we are sinners. So that is uh, Isaiah's second vision. First, he see God. Second, he see himself. Third, he see the ministries. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, saying, who shall I send? And who will go for us? Interesting. Then I said, here I am, send me. Too often we stop at the second one. We stop that. We just started here, right? Oh, we say by God, praise the Lord. I got a, a baptism certificate, and we move on to our life. Besides going to church, hopefully, it's a good. We should have participate in the church. But usually, we just stop there. But God going to send us. And here is the voice of the Lord. Before it's all Sarah's voice. But here now, Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord say, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? Interesting, this us. So us, again, they'll see God is God of Trinity, right? And Isaiah's response is very interesting. Here I am. Here I am. Is this word, he nani. He nani means here I am or here am I. All right. So, parents, you can train your kids. Jeffrey and the Jeffrey response, he nani. All right. So, you can, Arlene, and then Arlene will say, he nani. All right. Elizabeth, and it's a he nani. All right. I think this will be fun. 
that <laughs> we can train our little one. So, oh, and the people who don't know if you are at the park and they say, Johnny, and Johnny say, he nanny. <laughs> and the people say, what's going on here, right? So, yeah. So here in my is he nanny. And very interesting, you see, whenever God called Abraham, he said, he nanny. God called, well, Moses. Moses say he nanny. God call Samuel. Samuel say he nanny. So Isaiah is not the first one see say he nanny. So he nanny in in just say oh I'm here. It's more like a the the way that's a, here I am. Okay, I when I was in the military, I was this uh assistant for this colonel. He's the number two guy in in the units, right? And he has a bell. I my office and my dorm is right next to his, very close to his office. And then when he ring the bell, he he has a different signal. Okay, I don't remember. For example, if he ring the one long term tone, that is calling uh, a a soldier who would his driver. Okay, he would call it. But I have my own signal. He said ding ding. So I need to stop whatever I'm doing. I run to him. I said, yes, sir. All right. And I think that's more like he named me. He not just say, oh, hi, hi, dad. And you continue to do your thing. No. When you hear God calling, you got to run to it and say, yes, sir. Just like I did, I need to do that. All right. And it's not I just walk by. I need to run to it. Because that means that he has something important thing for me to do. So I think that's something more meaning unto the he name. Is that when God call and you stop whatever you're doing and he he come to God and said, here I am. That means you are ready to receive the mission. Yeah. Every time I run to the the of the the and and that means sometime during the night time, anytime. All right. That's why they put my my dorm right next to him. That I mean very close. I don't live with all other soldiers. I have a special my personal dorm because for their purpose. Yes, God will call us anytime. But would you respond? So when you hear God's voice, you say, He nanny, you run to it. But you, Isaiah doesn't know what he's getting into. The job is not easy. The job said, you go, people will not listen. Oh, would you take the job? Probably many of us have said, no way, no way, I'm not going. I'm not going. If you were Isaiah, would you go? But we have no choice. For a soldier, you won't ask the, Sir, what's your mission first before I say yes? No way, right? I just need to run to my boss and whatever he say, his mission, I just need to do it. There's no excuse. I remember once that uh, already a very late, very late, like 10, 8, 10 p.m. And he called me and I said, yes, sir. And said, I want you to find this officer for me. And uh, because that's already very late, they don't want to use the, uh, they don't want to use um, the microphone system to broadcast. And that time still no cell phone. What I'm gonna do? Can I say, sir, sorry, you crazy? I cannot find it. No, I just need to do whatever I could. So I just think about, hmm, this officer, around this time, he's not at his, uh, dorm office will be oh i run to the club that's off of the club for the office oh he has he's having the midnight snack there i said come on come on big boss is calling you so you see you when you call when you do response he nanny you just need to take whatever jobs it is no excuse isaiah needs to do that and interestingly you know, Jesus, book in the book of John, when those Jewish people, they rejected Jesus. John quote this verse. John quote this verse. 
Isaiah said to these things, uh, therefore they could not believe. So again, Isaiah said, he had blind their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they see their eyes and understand with their heart and turn, and I would hear, hear them. Isaiah said this thing, because he saw the glory and spoke for him. Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed in him, but for fear of the Pharisees that did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogues, for they love the glory that comes from men more than the glory that comes from God. So which glory you want? Glory of men or glory of God? When Isaiah spoke those messages, when, when Jesus said, when Jesus spoke, some people believe in Jesus, but they don't dare to confess because they care more for glory of men. And the same thing as we want to carry the message of God, people are going to reject because they care for glory of men more than glory of God. But God still want to call someone like Isaiah. And the Western Minister of Compassion said, what is the chief end of man? This is the number one question. What is the chief end of man? And the answer is that man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Did you care for the glory of God? Or do you care for the glory of man? As we see the world, especially America, if you see the glory of God is being been been for short it's been destroyed are you willing to respond to the task and i hear the voice of the lord saying who shall i send and who will go for us what will be their response post it and ask yourself jeffrey what will be your response or Peter, what would be their response? Or even can children, you can practice. What would be their response when your parents call you? May we learn from Isaiah. He nanny, send me. So our life could be used for the glory of God. That's, I love this song and I found this one has English. So this is Chinese song, but you can learn from the, the, the English uh, translation. Yeah. 
Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you not only save us, but you call us. And maybe sometimes the task is not that easy. We're going to speak, nobody's going to listen. Are you even going to reject us? Are going to persecute us? But yet you still call us and to do what you want us to do. And even your son, Jesus Christ, set an example for us. So Lord, help us. When we see, let us see the glory of God. When someone willing to do that, your name be glorified. May we learn from Isaiah's say he name before we ask what will be the task Lord what do you want me to do but we have a face that said he name send me and we know that's our privilege and honor to serve a mighty God that we can do things for the glory of God rather than for the glory of man may we willing to use our every effort our endeavor for our study for our work to use it for the glory of God. We thank you, Lord, for the, the message through Isaiah. And yet through Isaiah, we learn so much his message about Jesus, about a coming Messiah, the message of comforting. What a powerful message that pre preached through Isaiah. We thank you for Isaiah, his willingness to say, he named me. So may we have the, the strength courage of oh God to see he name so the world can hear your voice we thank you Lord now may the grace grace of Lord Jesus Christ love of God and the fellowship of Holy Spirit be with us from now until forever